This is the action schedule for Pax Pifuriana outlining the actions that a person can take in their turn. Uh, it's nominally three actions per turn. Uh, however, if the Hacendado is jailed, there's a limit of two actions. The first option uh, listed is to play a card from your hand. Here Boss, Shop, Boss Shepherd has just played a Ranch Enterprise card to his tableau at the cost of 3 being indicated by the number 3 in the top right hand corner in the blue circle. As he has played this Ranch it generates income as indicated by the Start Income icon on the top left of the card and we add a cube to his card which would now indicate that his nominal income at the end of his turn is now three gold. Here we have a Federal Troops card that is in Boss Shepherd's hand and he wishes to protect his ranch by playing the troops and deploying the troops to the ranch card. First need to check whether the region is correct. Now the ranch enterprise is in Chihuahua and the federal troops card has a Chihuahuan flag so the jurisdiction is correct and these troops can be deployed to the ranch. The second is the cost of deploying these troops. Uh, the ranch does not have an upgraded connection and therefore is relying on the mules bringing uh, for mules for access to the enterprise and the cost of the troops being deployed by a mule is three gold and therefore the player plays three gold to deploy the federal troops. And finally this particular card will change the regime from whatever including Pax Perferiana to the regime of Pax Perferiana uh, with the subsequent changes that that entails. By contrast if Boss Shepherd had these troops in his hand and wished to deploy the rebel troops again we check the jurisdiction and it's a Chihuahuan troop can be deployed to a Chihuahuan enterprise and in this case the cost by mule is exactly the same. In the example of deploying the troops with the ranch previously uh, the connection had not been upgraded and there was no difference in the cost of deploying the troops. However in this case Boss Shepherd had upgraded the connection and is now connected by rail and the federal troops you can see only require a cost of zero gold whereas the rebel troops require a cost of six gold in order to deploy, to deploy onto the ranch. The troop when it's finally deployed is placed behind the enterprise showing that the jurisdiction conforms and also in the top left hand corner of the troop shows its strength either with a single dot two dots or three three dots three dots being the strongest in this particular case the rebel troops themselves have given boss shepherd a revolution prestige point so previously we've looked at how a hacendado uses troops to protect its own uh, enterprises and now we'll look at how a rival Hacendado will use troops to extort um, an opponent's uh, enterprise. Uh, in this case we're going to use uh, the federal troops from the third rural corps. Uh, first thing to check is that the uh, district conforms with uh, that of the enterprise uh, district both being Chihuahua in this case 
so the card is valid. Uh, the second thing is that uh, the payment uh, for uh, this deployment is again dictated by the connection type and in this case the railroad has been built and therefore the deployment of these troops uh, costs zero uh, by the uh, Hacendado. The third thing is that the regime will change to Pax Porfiriana when this is first played onto the Enterprise. Uh, as previously shown the uh, troop is placed behind Uh, the enterprise that it is protecting. Uh, in this case uh, the rival Hacendado is now extorting uh, the uh, enterprise and so the income cube is removed of the host Hacendado and the extorting Hacendado's income cube is placed on the troop card to maintain ownership for uh, the game and also to uh, indicate that there's an income cube that's coming from the enterprise. We now look at the situation where the Hacendado that owns the ranch has put deployed a troop to protect its ranch and therefore that federal troop is owned by the Hacendado in play on the screen and a rival Hacendado wants to play a troop card onto this Hassan this enterprise and we note that the troop strength is two dots or two strength army uh, and therefore the opposing Hacendado will need to use a card with a greater troop strength uh, being 3. So we have the rival Hacendado is going to deploy these troops, these rebel troops. Again we check the jurisdiction being Chihuahua and that is able to be uh, deployed onto this ranch. Uh, secondly, we look at the cost of deployment being 5 uh, due to the railroad connection that's been upgraded. And thirdly, we check that the strength of the troops is greater than the troops that are currently in play. Here we have a 3 dot army and therefore that is stronger than the 2 dot army and therefore this action can be taken. So the federal troops that we're protecting are removed and the new rebel troops come in and replace. The regime would be changed to anarchy when this is first played. And then as previously shown, the income cube from this Hacendado is replaced by an income cube of the rival Hacendado. And so in this circumstance Boss Shepherd would only get three income uh, from his tableau and the rival Hacendado would be able to count his cube on these rebel troops as part of his income. Now we look at another one of the cards that can be played uh, which is a partner card indicated by the word partner in the top left hand corner. There are many different types of partner in the car in the in the game, but fundamentally to play, they are paid for with the item uh, the amount indicated in the uh, circle and the top right, being six gold, and then the partner is played to the tableau. The advantage to having a partner is often it provides a prestige point. In this case, we can see that it's revolution and also an additional ability that can be drawn on uh, in certain circumstances. This particular one uh, allows a player or a Hacendado to purchase orange cards that are in the market for zero gold which is a tremendous advantage 
for those that come out very early on in the market being at a cost of 16 or 8 gold each. Here we have uh, player red attempting to play an orange card on player orange. The card is uh, structured in that it will cost zero to play. Uh, we check that the jurisdiction is valid and in this case the rioters can occur in Sonora or Chihuahua and hence on the ranch is able to be played. In the top left hand corner are the metrics. We have the ability to steal a gold from the orange player and it places three unrest on the ranch. Unrest is indicated by placing three red discs on the ranch and then the card has been played. Uh, the Hacendado then has to resolve the unrest situation before any income cubes count towards his income per turn. Looking again at that card that was played, in this case there is no grudge point that can be uh, given to the uh, Hacendado that has received uh, the attention of the rioters. Uh, if we look at a different situation, here we have an American University, University of Arizona, and another player indicated by the red block is going to play strikers. The uh, first thing is to check that the jurisdiction uh, conforms and we have jurisdiction of America and the university is in America so they uh, co comply. Uh, again this card has a zero cost to play and the X indicated in the top left hand corner for both the steel value and the unrest value depends on the number of outrage points that you have in your hand in your tableau. Uh, for this particular case there are no, we will assume that there's no uh, outrage points on the red player's uh, tableau and therefore what this card does is nothing more than a, a, a give the grudge point of revolution to Boss Shepherd and that's indicated by placing the card under the Hacendado and now Boss Shepherd has a revolution point. Uh, if we there, uh, instead assume that the red player has two outrage points on their tableau, this card would cost them nothing. It would steal two gold from Boss Shepherd and it would place two unrest on the University of Arizona, which would then prevent the income being uh, gained in Boss Shepherd's turn. Uh, with the play of an orange card, it can be played against another player or it can be played against your own uh, enterprises in this case in order to obtain the straw man revolution point. So this card would allow you to gain the revolution point, in this case costing nothing, nothing to play the card if you have no outrage points then you steal nothing if you have no outrage points then you impose no unrest but you do gain the revolution point the jurisdiction is America and the uh, enterprise is America so in this case the Hacendado gains the grudge point with no impact to their own tableau Uh, if we now look at a black card that is going to be played, we have a lawsuit from the Bureau of Investigation. This allows uh, a player to nationalise a US enterprise. The cost is zero and the card will allow the player to steal one gold from Boss Shepherd. We have a US enterprise here being the US University of Arizona. 
nationalising is effectively discarding the card so the income cube is lost and then the grudge point is awarded to Boss Shepherd and that is indicated by flipping the card over and further the Hassandado himself is jailed to be jailed is indicated by the use of a blue disc until that jail has been removed that jailed indicator has been remo removed the Hassandado only has two actions instead of three actions uh, looking at a different uh, black card we have uh, the cost in this case being x x is defined uh, by the wording in the middle of the card. So this card is a, an assassination and it allows the player to assassinate a partner of another player. The cost to play this card is the cost that it originally cost to play the partner being assassinated. In this case 5. It does not steal any gold uh, and it takes as uh, indicated here that unless the regime is US intervention it will take two actions to complete. So the play of this card eliminates and discards the US spy. It then becomes a grudge point to Boss Shepherd which again is indicated by playing the card and, it, uh, and highlighting that there's one revolution point uh, for the Hassandado. Uh, the use of an assassination card can be used against another player or against yourself which is known as a straw man tactic so if this assassination card was your card you could play it in order to eliminate the partner that doesn't change but you yourself gain the revolution grudge point the second option is to buy a card from the market. The first action taken expends one action. Uh, the second market card purchased expends two further actions. So the limit in one normal turn is to be able to buy two market cards and not take any other actions. Here we have uh, the Pax Perferiana board set up at the beginning of play. Uh, we have a market and uh, we have the card pile two public cards the current regime and the market across the main part of the board on the left we have a discard location and at the bottom left we also have an indication as to whether the market is a bull market or a bear market to buy a card from the market requires a number of gold to be spent which is indicated by the numbers at the bottom or top of the market display. So the most left is free and the far right is 16 gold per card. So the, the required gold is paid and the card is removed and placed in the hand of the player. One card costs one action. If a second market card is bought, in this case the Rebel Governor costs another 4 gold, so a total of 5 gold has been paid, but the second card that's purchased consumes the final two actions. So the most cards that can be bought in a turn are two, utilising all three actions that the player has. At the end of the a player's turn, if cards have been removed from the market or bought from the market, the remainder are removed down to fill the vacant spots and then the top cards from the play deck are then put out in the most expensive slots. If a player decides to pay for a headline card, they pay the, in this case, one gold the card is then immediately actioned. 
there are two actions that can be carried out the headline itself or status quo if status quo is decided then the card is reversed and the uh, flavor text in this case said says secularist laws ignored and the card is just placed on the discard for the economy however if the player wishes to play the headline in this case the flavor text is lay lerdo enforced we then go through the actions that are indicated in the shaded area so it's peasant confrontations first one is that all put an unrest counter on one of their Mexican enterprises the second is that the regime changes to Pax Perferiana and the third in this case is there's a strife icon that each player if they have both red cards in their hand and white cards in their hand have to make a decision as to whether to discard all their red cards or all their white cards if they only have cards of one colour then they don't have to do anything and likewise if they have cards of neither colour they don't have to do anything for instance that is a red card and that is a white card so a player that had both of those would have to decide to just discard the rebel troops or the local troops the card the t headline card is again removed to the discard pile the third option is to buy and play a public card from the deck another action that can be taken is to buy and play a public card that in itself only requires one action there are two public cards one from the Catholic Church and one for Teddy Roosevelt the cost of buying and playing happens in one go so both cards have a different cost 16 and 18 and in fact they're double sided and therefore when a player buys one of the cards they can choose which side they want to have on their tableau a point to note is that the two public cards the reverse side are both command prestige points they are very uh, lucrative if you're uh, trying to win by a command uh, prestige the fourth option is to sell a card from your hand or your tableau for the current price listed in the economy of the regime that's active uh, the action to sell a hand or tableau card can be indicated uh, illustrated here we have Bernardo Reyes has got one tableau card the ranch and two cards in his an hand indicated uh, by the cards face down in order to sell a card the card is removed from the hand or the tableau and placed on the discard pile the price that is achieved is equal to the economy rating of the regime in play in this case we have Pax Perferiana that each card will, be, will net the player three gold so this card could remo be removed placed on the discard pile get three gold this card for another action could be sold for another three gold placed on the discard pile and then for the third action for the player the ranch itself removing the income cubes could be removed from his tableau placed on the uh, discard pile for another three gold in this case he would have obtained with three actions nine gold there are four regimes this Pax Perferiana would net him three per card martial law would be two per card anarchy would be one per card and US intervention would be two per card the fifth option is to redeploy a troop card from one enterprise to another enterprise or indeed the same enterprise uh, in this situation Boss Shepherd has his water project covered in unrest but he'd also previously deployed uh, US troops uh, to provide protection to the water project the water project would normally earn for income 
uh, one for the actual water project, two from the upgraded connections, and on the assumption that we're currently in the Pax Porfiriana regime, his loyalty point also provides an income. None of this income is going to give him uh, any benefit until he removes uh, the four unrest tokens. Uh, one of the actions that he could uh, use is the police action, but that costs him an action and three gold for each counter removed, being four actions and twelve gold, uh, which is expensive in both time and money. He can instead use the redeploy troop card in order to remove unrest. So he's able to redeploy in location. So those US troops stay put, it cost him no gold because they're currently there, but he's able to remove a number of unrest discs equal to the firepower of the troops. Firepower of the troops in this case being two, and therefore for each action costing him zero gold, he's able to remove two discs. And with a second action, he could remove the following two discs. So instead of four actions and 12 gold, the troops allow him to remove all the unrest in two actions for zero gold. We have a situation for Boss Shepherd. He has his water project from which he could derive one income, but his opponent has made two upgrade connections and therefore they're drawing two income from the card if the unrest wasn't there. The unrest is going to consume two actions to remove entirely and then he will gain one income but his opponent would be able to gain two income. In this case he might decide that he's going to forfeit the water project and maybe sell that card from his tableau removing the uh, ability for his opponent to obtain two income. He doesn't want to di discard his US troops, which he would have to if he discarded the water project, and therefore prior to discarding or selling the water project, he's going to redeploy his troops. So again, the, the test is, firstly, is it the right jurisdiction? And we have an American troop able to deploy to an American enterprise. So that is passed. In this case, Currently the connection is the mule, and if we look at the US troops, the cost for a mule is four. So the cost of redeploying the troops is four, and then that card is moved to sit behind the ranch. And now the ranch has the protection of the US troops. Also note that the card said when first played, the regime changes to US intervention. As this is not regarded as first played, that action or <laughs> effect uh, does not take place. It would have taken place when the card was deployed to the water project. Now the player has protected his ranch in preparation for selling the water project. In this example we have the effect of three players in the game. Uh, Boss Shepherd has had his water project, the connection cubes are from another player and therefore is not earning any income from the connection cubes. On top of that the blue player has played troops to extort the water project. So Boss Shepherd doesn't even have an income cube as ne that's now sitting on the troops card. It may be that the player blue can see that his the water project card might be susceptible to being sold by Boss Shepherd and again doesn't want to have his troops discarded. So it may be that the blue player decides to redeploy their troops from the water project to the ranch which suffers no unrest and also no income cubes from another player. So in this case 
this card is redeployed to this card. Again, the jurisdiction is adequate. We have an American Enterprise and an American Troop. We are now connected via the railway and on the Troop card the railway only costs two. So the blue player can redeploy their troops to the ranch. When that happens the income cube is extorted and now the blue player has two income from an enterprise owned by Boss Shepherd. This may make it susceptible to being sold by Boss Shepherd, but he has two problems. He has an unrest uh, on uh, the water project and he has an extorting troop on the ranch. It may be that Boss Shepherd also has to do the speculate action in order to place his income cube back on the water project. The sixth option is to buy land and normally this itself will expend two actions. Uh, in the example to buy land, uh, this ranch can accommodate more land and the cost of buying land is the current number of cubes uh, on the ranch. So in order to buy land here it will cost the Hacendado one gold and a second income cube is placed on the card. Uh, the buy land action costs in terms of actions two actions. So on a subsequent turn uh, this Hesundado could again buy land at now costing two gold to put a third on the card. If this card had its uh, connection upgraded to the railroad the cost for uh, buying land is now four gold to place the further cube on. There is no limit to the number of income cubes that can be held on a ranch or a plantation. The seventh option is to upgrade a connection on one of your enterprises. The ranch card uh, currently in Boss Shepherd's tableau has a vacant connection icon indicated by the railroad to Kansas City, Mexico and Derby. Uh, that connection can be upgraded from the mule at the bottom of the card to the locomotive by paying the sum of five gold as indicated by the five in the blue circle in the oval for the train. Uh, by paying the five gold a connection cube is placed and now the income for Boss Shepherd at the end of the term turn is a nominal four gold. The eighth option is to use the police action to either remove unrest from an enterprise or to free your Hacendado from Jail. In this example, Boss Shepherd has uh, an enterprise, the water project, and from that water project he would normally be obtaining three income. He's upgraded both of the connections available. However, through either his own action or the action of another player, uh, three unrest now sit on that enterprise, and any uh, unrest counter blocks that enterprise from providing income to the Hacendado. So in this case the player will want to take the action police. Uh, police costs three gold and one action. So in this particular case Boss Shepherd will have to spend his whole turn spending three actions and nine gold in order to remove 
the three unrest. At the end of his turn, he would now get an income of five, having removed the three unrest. In this situation, Boss Shepherd is currently jailed, indicated by the blue disc on his Hacendado card. While he has a blue disc, while he is jailed, he only gets two actions. And therefore, he would like to carry out the police action in order to remove uh, himself from jail. That will cost him one action and three gold. The disc is then removed and he reobtains the ability to have three actions per turn, including the turn that he is released from jail. The ninth option is to take the speculate action and place one of your cubes on a card in the market. The speculate action can be taken by a player to place one of their cubes on a card that's in the marketplace. For instance, a red player could place a speculate cube on the Krupp railway gun. The benefit of that is when and if that card is bought, the money paid to buy that card is not paid to the bank, but to the owner of the cube that speculated. So if the Krupp Railway Company was played, paid for by the blue player, the card would remove, be removed to the blue player's hand. The eight gold would be paid to the red player, and the red player would regain their cube back to their supply.